Good morning. Welcome again to Morning Devotions and thank you again so much for our time together. It's going to be a beautiful revival night again at South Campus. We're focusing on this incredible joy-filled remnant that the Bible said God is the crown of his remnant. We'll see you tonight at South Campus. But right now, Matthew beginning 11, verse 1. After Jesus was finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who's to come or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, now look down at verse seven. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. Now, I want to teach you first of all today about teaching. I want you to notice that different things are taught to different people. I want you to notice that Jesus took his 12 disciples those that he was training for leadership and spoke to them in a very private way, instructed them in private. There need to be times when we don't have a public meeting, when we gather leaders together in private as a church, and we, we speak leadership truths to people. Secondly, Jesus spoke in a semi-private fashion, answering the question of John's disciples. But then thirdly, Jesus spoke in a very public fashion to the crowds, and he gave instruction to the crowds. But now there's another truth. If you look on down to verse 25, Jesus said, Father, thank you that you've hidden these truths. There are some truths that are hidden from certain categories of people, from the wise and this type of people. God hides those truths and reveals them to the simple. Now the other thing I want you to notice here is the culture that comes out in this chapter. We come down to verse 16. Jesus said, to what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplace, calling out to others, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang the dirge and you did not mourn. Jesus said, now listen, you want this culture of compliance. You, you want this culture of conformity. He said, now John didn't conform to you. He said, and I'm not going to conform to you either. In verse 7, he already begins to defend John the Baptist. We learn a great truth there that, that leaders defend other leaders when it comes to the perceptions of public culture. But then he comes along to this culture of conformity and says, now, listen, John didn't conform to you, and I'm not going to conform to you also. You're, you're used to doing things like little children and the leaders respond to you and they, they conform to what you want, just like Paul taught in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, that in the last days there would be people who gather around them, teachers saying what their itching ears want to hear. In times prior to revival, public perception, public demand, the public appetite for truth is conformity. The public determines we want you to conform to what we want you to be like. We want you to say what we want to hear. We want you to do what we want you to do. As leaders, we want you to conform to us. Now, this is what religion is always like prior to great revival. Jesus comes along and says, you know what? As a teacher, I teach some things to my leaders in private. I teach other things to defend other leaders in semi-private. And I teach other things to the crowds. But he said, you know what? I will not bow to your demand for conformity. As leaders today, if you're listening to me, the whole world is demanding conformity today. The whole world is demanding that whatever they do, we respond to what they want and what they desire. But that's not being a leader. As leaders, we must stand up and boldly declare truth.